So you run the place by yourself? Things are tight. We can't afford to take on anyone else. Well, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. We are here for Fright Fest Friday and we kick off the day with the premiere of The Holding. Not local then. I know why you're here. You think if you can get me to like you, you can get my mum's knickers. Any chance of that, you think? You must be very proud of your achievement with this. Oh, I am. I'm really excited. I can't believe it's come to this, you know. So long and so much work and so many people behind you that do all the work and I get to take all the glory. It's great. <laughs> well, it's your, it's your directorial debut in a feature film. What was, what the, what's the whole process been like for you? And what was it about this script that made you want to take this one on board? Um, the script came to me about uh, three or four years ago through the writer James Stormer. I do a lot of work for BAFTA and the script came to me through then. And I just loved his writing. I loved the film and I loved the connection with the, the leading lady and the two other girls that are in the film. So uh, that's how it came about and it was a great process. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's hard and it's tough raising money and all that kind of thing. But once we got there on set, we kind of just raced from the beginning of the day to the end of the day and it was brilliant. It's a great accolade. You're a, you know, you're a female director, um, and you're, you're the only female director. I don't know if you know that being featured at the festival. <laughs> I'm holding the flag high for women. <laughs> and I have to say, you've brought out a lovely performance in Vincent. It was a, he was outstanding, wasn't he? He was phenomenal. I mean, what's so interesting about Vincent is he was so busy that year, so we only had a few meetings prior to actually filming, and. Um, he turned up on day one, all guns blazing, and just went for it. And he was just fantastic. And I think that, that what's great about the script, and it's so cleverly written, that you are constantly being held to think, is this a ghost story? Is this something more sinister? Uh, it's really very clever, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we did, one of the early drafts of the script was toying with that whole ghost thing. But then we kind of pulled it back into the realm of reality. And I think it does play with you in that respect, yeah. And how has it been for you as a director working with such well-established British actors? Oh, a dream. I mean, I, I just feel so blessed to be able to work with such great actors and they've just been so phenomenal and also so interesting in terms of how they approach the craft so differently and yet come up with such fantastic work. So it's been fantastic. Dean was lucky. I'd do anything to have what he had. What is the key skill that you have that you can bring to the film to make sure that it, get, that it gets made? Um, making sure it gets made. Seriously, I don't. I'm not very good at taking no for an answer, and I don't think you can be. You have, you know, it's just that whole thing of completely believing in the people you're working with and making it happen, and um, and, and enjoying it because otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. It, it would drive you bonkers. And logistically, <laughs> what's what's it been like making this film? Because it, there's a departure from urban gritty London into into the the countryside. So what's that been like? Yeah, and the last film we shot was um, was over in the East End. So this one was um, we we scouted for years to find the right. right location because it had to be just right and we found this amazing farmhouse in Derbyshire a lot of people were saying come on shoot it down in Essex shoot it down south no way because you absolutely because the location's key and once everyone when, once the cast walked onto that location they knew they're in the right place and they felt it and, they, and, and the farm comes to life yeah it's all about making the connection isn't it Completely, that's right, and, that, and that's, that, that location I think definitely helped us. And you're in, you know, where we were in the Peak District, in a place called Longna, lovely little village, uh, wonderful people. I hope they're going to get to see the film at some point. They, um, it's, it's where, the, where the English countryside starts to get really rugged and really dramatic, and it's just a, you know, like as soon as you take the camera and you've got these beautiful backdrops behind the characters, absolutely stunning. Yeah. And what makes Susan the the, the, the right director for this for this script? She's, she she breathes it. She's all over the script and is, is such a sort of um, unique director. I mean, people have started calling her the next Catherine Bigelow. Let's see what happens. Is it, is it quite a risk for you as a producer, excuse me there, um, for, to take on a first time director? I know she's done shorts and things, but, uh, but it, this is her first time in a feature. Yeah. It, for me, it wasn't so much a case of taking her on as convincing other people that she could do the job because we worked together so much before. Um, I knew she could do it. She's supremely confident behind the camera and knows exactly what she wants and what she, how she wants to make the film. It's just a case of making sure that everyone else gets it and understands that this is the person for the film as well. And I think most people, when they met her for five minutes, they understand that. Oh my God. You did this. Yeah? Prove it. Life and death on the farm. What was the, the essence of the film and, and what gave you the, the creative buzz to make it, to write it really? There were a couple of things really. One, I wanted to write a really strong female lead because um, I just find those characters really exciting. 
Um, and secondly, um, I spent a year working on a farm uh, very near the one where we actually filmed it. Um, and so it was nice to be able to kind of create a world that I knew. Yeah. I think what was very refreshing from the film, we see so many kind of gritty, urban yeah. type films from the UK mm. and there's so much more to Britain. And I think this film does give us a, a hint of that. It's a nice, it's a present departure. I mean, we, we thought as, as, as a producer we, uh, and the other producers, we thought that um, it's not really been done set in, in the countryside on a farm. Um, there's so many of these gritty urban set in, in city centres and stuff. And we wanted this sense of isolation. And um, as I said before, the countryside is another character in this film. And, and so uh, this bleakness, which the Peak District offers in buckets and lots of rain. Beautiful yeah, bleakness. Beautiful, but a lot of rain. Um, um, so we, we found it was absolutely fine to do it in situ where we wanted, where it was set. It's perfect. Um, and so yeah, the, the, it was. A, it, it was. And also the landscape gave a kind of scale to the to yeah. the movie, which was a low budget movie. So you know, it helps. Better production <laughs> values. Yeah, exactly. So. And, and how how difficult is it in this sort of you're talking about low budget? Yeah. How how difficult is it to raise funds in this financial climate to make a film? Um, no, it's very tough. Um, we actually got this off the ground quite quickly. Um, I was just saying earlier that uh, November 2009 we had the finished script and we were shooting by July 2010. So, you know, seven, eight months uh, later we, we had it um, filming. I mean, it is difficult and it was difficult then. It's getting no easier now. Uh, recession has hit every sector, including the film industry. And a lot of um, ways of getting money through the private sector um, is, is drying up because um, people doesn't, don't have the money or they don't want to put it into a high-risk venture like a feature film. So, you know, we'll, we'll work it out. It's, it's fine. It's fine. And, and, for, and for you as a script writer, James, what's it been like that, you know, you've cr created your, your piece that's very personal to you, handing it over to somebody else to, to helm? and, to, and to ruin it. To, <laughs> but, well, but you never know, do you? Really? Um, well, the, because of the way that the project kind of came about, um, we're, we're friends for years. We're in business together, so it's not quite like handing over. James is, is an associate producer on this as well, so he kept hold of his baby to a certain extent. It wasn't completely thrown over. And also, I met um, the director through the BAFTA um, Rockcliffe Forum. New Writer Forum. So we kind of like together, kind of thought, yeah, she'd be a good fit for this. And then she took over. You don't see anything. Ever. You're doing well going from strength to strength? Yeah, well it's um you know it's the first time at Fright Fest and I'm glad the um the movie got into Fright Fest, so I'm, I'm very excited about seeing it on the big screen. I've only seen it on the little monitor now, so yeah, I'm very excited. You, you've got a chance to be behind the scenes and also yeah. in front of camera. Yeah. Uh, explain the processes for you, which one do you enjoy the most? Do you know what? Everyone asks me the same question and it's both, you know. I enjoy um, finding scripts, I enjoy developing scripts, I enjoy getting the money, getting the actors, the directors, doing the deals with the distributors, but then I like acting, so you know, it's, it, I, you know, I suppose if you were to ask me what my hobbies were, it'd be acting and filmmaking. So, you know, I get to uh, play every day. So it's good. It's good. And, and how did you become involved in this in this project in particular? Well, funny enough, there's a guy called Matt Button who's um, a set designer, and um, on a few of their movies, and he um, he come he literally ran me up one day and said, "Look, Tell," he said, "I've got this great script that I'm involved with. Do you want to come and have, do you want to read of it?" And I went, "Everyone's got a great script, you know." And I read it and I actually really liked it. And I said, you know, I wouldn't mind helping you out with that, you know. So um, that's how it all came about, really. It went from there to having a meeting with Susan and Alex and, and George and James, and, you know, and here we are. And you, you, a year you, later. <laughs> you, got a, you, you play quite a, a good character. He's, he's quite key in, in the role. What was that like? Because he's a slight departure from the kind of roles you would normally play. Well, what, what, I mean, the thing for me this year is, you know, what I didn't want to do is just get sort of stereotyped as, oh, you want a hard man or a villain or a cockney, get Terry, you know. So I thought this year I wanted to, you know, last year actually, I thought I want to try some different roles. So this is obviously a thriller and it's set in the Peak District. So there's not many cockneys that own farms in the Peak District. So um, Susan said, look, she said, you've got to change your appearance. I want you to look dirty, scruffy. I want you to grow a beard. I want you to, you know, go with a dialect coach and neutralise your accent. So I did all that. and. Um, you know, a lot of people that have seen it sort of went, oh, I didn't know you could do that. So it's good for the show reel, and it's also good, for, good for, for me as an actor, as a body of work. And then I did another film um, called Outside Bet, which is a comedy um, with Bob Hoskins and um, Jenny Agatha, and that's coming out for Universal. Sasha directed that, Sasha Bennett, yeah. 
and um, you know that's going to get a big release in the end of November. Um, so and I'm playing a womanizer that doesn't get any women in that. So I've played two roles last year, which I don't, and in another hood as well. So I'm playing different things just just to mix it up a bit, really. There's no honey here, not for you. How did you come across the script? How did you get involved? Um, yeah, basically I uh, got involved from uh, Terry and uh, read the script and uh, saw the and I just thought it was absolutely, from the minute I read it, I was glued into it. Sometimes you read scripts and you go, but this had me glued and I was just proud to be part of it. It was just great from start to finish. You know when you can see something unraveling and you see it in your mind and you see it in your head, you're like, yes, yeah, great. And uh, so it was just great to be part of it. And especially with like actors, I mean, for me, this is my second film. I've done Another Hood recently. And um, with like David Bradley and Vincent Regan, and these are all well-known actors and, and also Cursor. And to sit there with these and have such a jump. And also I've done Brighton Rock before. So it's just building and building. And it was just a, to, to work with people like this was absolutely phenomenal. I think he's an angel. I'll close you down, Cassie. Premiere? Um, yeah, it's really exciting. And you're here at Fright Fest. What's it been like being in the film? Um, filming it was like really fun, and I'm so glad I got the part in this film. She's, she's quite a deep young lady, isn't she? Because she, she's very much into the Bible. Yeah, yeah, she loves the Bible and God and Jesus and everything. And that, that adds a little bit of um, an extra sort of a, a slant to the film, doesn't it? Because it, then it kind of makes it this film seem a little bit more supernatural. Did you think that's it? Yeah, I thought so. And having Amy like the Bible, I thought it was quite good for the film and everything. And is this your first film? Um, yeah, it's my first film. You got to work with some great actors as well, didn't you? Yeah, well, I was really glad. Um, David Bradley, who's in Harry Potter, which I like, kissed and wearing. I haven't seen any of her stuff because it's all 15s and 18s but she's really great from what I saw her do and just everyone was really great. And what did you feel that you learnt from them? Um, I feel I learnt like to like not go over the top with acting because like in theatre you have to like go over the top whereas film and screen you don't have to so I learnt that. This is quite a departure in character for you what was it about Cassie that made you want to connect with her to play her? Um, just that it's just it's very different for me to be able to play a farmer. So um, when I say to people, you know, casting directors that I'm playing a farmer, I think everyone's like, "You a farmer?" But um, as I said, my accent's kind of like a bit more neutral, and um, yeah, it was just. And I'm a, I'm a good mother for once. I'm a very good mother. You're seeing this. I'm not horrible, but um, yeah. So it was just nice. It was nice to get an opportunity to play something different. There's, uh, obviously there's the, the relationship between mother and her two daughters. It, it starts off quite disjointed, but it, there is a subtle turn, obviously, that they, they become closer. Was that very difficult to get the, the kind of um, the subtlety in that really? Um, to be honest, I really took direction from Susan, um, the director. She's, I would class her as quite a perfectionist. So a lot of the time a director sort of like leave you to do what you want to do or you discuss it or you just do it. but she kind of knew exactly what she wanted um, so even from kind of paragraph to paragraph in the script so yeah I just kind of went with her and put my trust in her he's going to kill us isn't he